On this episode of Explorer Television, we're headed to Priest Lake, Idaho for some snowmobiling. And then we spend the night at Hemingway Manor. It's a bed and breakfast in St. Mary's, Idaho that you'll want to visit sometime. Plus, we go back to Bonners Ferry, Idaho and delve even deeper into its rich history. But we begin right here in Moscow, Idaho, home to the University of Idaho up on the hill, but also a place that's becoming known as the heart of the arts. Thank you for watching Explorer Television. If you're just visiting for a weekend or if you've been here all your life, we'll show you the best places in the inland Northwest to explore. Now, here are your Explorer guides, Rick and Teresa Lukens. This portion of Explorer Television is made possible by the North Central Idaho Travel Association Our first stop on Explorer Television is the Moscow Co-op. We meet with Kathleen Burns of the Moscow Arts Council for a tour of our galleries in town. This place is kind of a, a meeting place in Moscow right here in this co-op. Yeah, this is kind of our cultural community center here. Um, anyone that's meeting anyone for a small lunch or a small dinner, um, we meet here at the co-op. Kathleen, I think so many people when they think of Moscow or Pullman, any of the surrounding cities, or especially those that have universities, think that that's what the city is all about, is college the university. Town, yeah. yeah, it's a college town. It's more, much more than that, though. Oh, it's way more than a college town. We have several uh, downtown galleries that feature local artists, regional artists, national artists. So uh, we have quite a draw from people from out of area to come and check out our arts community. Uh, we also have great recreational facilities, pools, ice arenas. Tell us about some of the galleries in downtown Moscow. Well, right in downtown we have the Pritchard Gallery, which is run by the University of Idaho. We also have another gallery called the Above the Rim Gallery, which is um, quite unique in that it's above a bicycle shop, Paradise Creek Bicycle. We also, in our own city hall, the city recognizes arts by supporting a gallery within its city hall. And this is set up as kind of a, uh, an easy uh, foot tour. Type. Pretty, pretty easy foot tour. Everything in Moscow is within about three blocks. Roger Rowley is the director of the Pritchard Gallery. And Roger, you're setting up for your latest exhibit. Who is this? This is Sally Graves Macklis and Margot Kwan Knight. How often do you turn an exhibit over? Uh, we change exhibits about every six weeks to two months. So tell us about the next one coming up. Uh, starting in January will be the UI faculty exhibition with professors from the College of Art and Architecture. And uh, when are you open? We're open from 10 to 8, Tuesday through Saturday. And Sunday's till 6. All right, we can't wait to see this set up. We'll be back. Right. We're off to the next gallery. Thank you very All much right. for coming. We're walking through a bike shop to get to an art gallery. The Above the Rim Gallery is located above the Paradise Creek Bicycle Shop and they're open seven days a week. Well Kathleen, we saw some great art galleries. That was a real treat. Uh, and where are we standing now? This is the heart of our city. This is Friendship Square where we host our farmer's market six months every Saturday from 8 to 12. And then there's the Appaloosa Museum as we're getting ready to leave town, uh, which is a, a tribute to a horse that was bred by the Native Americans in this area. What else? Well, you can't leave town without visiting our local winery, the Camas Winery Shop. All right, we'll do that up next on Explorer TV. When exploring the Palouse, stay at the Churchyard Inn. This bed and breakfast converted from a convent overlooks the rolling hills of the Palouse. The Churchyard Inn is a wonderful blend of old world craftsmanship and a unique bed and breakfast where hospitality is habit. Enjoy a comfortable stay any time of the year. Also think of the Churchyard Inn when planning weddings, receptions, and other gatherings. Take Highway 195 to Uniontown. Come see us. We will meet you at the door with a smile and show you your comfortable room. 
after a day exploring Moscow, slow down for a while and enjoy our contemporary Northwest cuisine. Red Door Restaurant, 215 South Main, is where you'll find the finest house-cut tenderloin, the best wild Alaskan salmon, and an extensive wine selection. Enjoy the conversation a little longer with family and friends as you enjoy a tempting dessert. Red Door Restaurant, the place to relax and reflect after a long day of exploring Moscow, Idaho. Red Door, a slow food restaurant since 1998. Dine in casual elegance at the Broiler at the Best Western University Inn. Serving lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch, you will taste some of the finest food on the Palouse. Succulent steaks, ocean fresh seafood, and old world pasta. The Broiler is open for lunch Monday through Friday. Enjoy dinner Monday through Saturday. Then bring your friends and family to enjoy the finest Sunday brunch. The Broiler at the Best Western University Inn. Serving explorers in Moscow for 30 years. Welcome back to Explorer Television. If you enjoy fine wines, make sure that you visit Camas Prairie Winery. It's worth the stop. Stu Scott is the winemaker here at the Camas Prairie Winery. Stu, how many different varieties do you make here? Rick, I make 25 different types of wine, including premium grape wines, the only handmade champagne produced in Idaho, some honey wines, and some fruit wines from fruits other than grapes. And you're an old hand at this, Stu. You've been around a long time. I have been. I had hair when I started. This is the 26th year for the winery. It's the oldest winery in North Idaho, the second oldest in the state of Idaho. And no matter how long it takes, I'm going to keep at this until I get this winemaking thing figured well, out. Well, it's unusual to have it family owned in these days. It is. It is. And uh, unfortunately, I haven't yet uh, got either of my kids interested, so uh, I have to keep at this for a while. But. It's, it's a great time. It's a wonderful way to, to spend my life. The neat thing here is that we're right along Main Street. Can anybody come in and taste wines? Absolutely. We encourage that. We do wine tasting every day that we're open. And we're open noon daily, Monday through Saturday till 6.30 in the evening. Everything I make is available to taste. Beside that, if you find something you like, you can sit down and have a glass of wine. I also have the largest selection of imported beer in North Idaho. Which Sweet. Is, yes. Always at least 88, today we're at 95, but we're going to give you as much service as product, so we'll help you through picking the wine that's right for you. It's like picking ice cream at Baskin Robbins. They don't have the good stuff and the bad stuff, they have your favorite and the others. So the best wine in my store is the one you like the best. All right, well Stu, let's, uh, we're gonna raise a glass here. Uh, Viva Moscow. Camas Prairie Winery is open year round for tasting and shopping. Next on Explorer Television, we head north to Bonner's Ferry for a history lesson and more shopping. If you've explored Moscow and have fallen in love, now's the time to buy in Moscow, Idaho. Hatter Creek Land Company is a full-service real estate company. Whether you want land, a home, or business property, your first call should be to Hatter Creek Land Company. Our agents know the Moscow area and can find you exactly what you're looking for. You've seen what Moscow has to offer. Plan on coming back again and again to a summer home or move here permanently. Whatever you decide, Hatter Creek Land Company will make it easy to own property in or near Moscow. Are you looking for a new or used ATV, motorcycle, snowmobile, or accessories? Explore Palouse Country Sports in Moscow. Come see their new store. Their address may have changed, but their great service and people are the same. Palouse Country Sports is an exclusive Yamaha dealer, so you know they've got the best ATVs, motorcycles, and snowmobiles. Honest and fair service is just another reason to drive to Moscow and shop at Palouse Country Sports. Tickets are on sale now for the 42nd Annual Lionel Hampton Jazz Festival at the University of Idaho. Enjoy four days of outstanding jazz music from around the world. Among many others performing at this year's event, Bobby McFerrin, a 10-time Grammy Award winner, and the Lionel Hampton New York Big Band. Local musicians will also take the stage as elementary to graduate students perform. Go to the website to see the complete lineup of performers and to purchase tickets. The 42nd Annual Lionel Hampton Jazz Festival at the University of Idaho. This portion of Explorer Television in Bonners Ferry is brought to you in part by Panhandle State Bank, exactly like no other bank. Safeway, ingredients for life. Jill's Cafe, the best fresh homemade pies and soups in Bonners Ferry. Dollar Depot and more, your down-to-earth general merchandise store. 
and by the Bonners Ferry Log-In Motel, the best rest North Idaho has to offer. This portion of Explore Television is made possible by the Bonners Ferry Chamber of Commerce and the North Idaho Tourism Alliance. Well, you could pretty much throw a rock and hit Canada from here. Welcome to Bonners Ferry, Idaho. The town got its name back in the 1860s when gold was discovered in British Columbia and people were going north to make their fortunes. A guy from Walla Walla named Edwin Bonner built a ferry landing here to get people across the Kootenai River and the name stuck. And then early in the 20th century, it became one of the largest producing lumber regions in the entire world. And the town of Bonners Ferry was up and running. A great way to learn about Bonners Ferry is a visit to the Boundary County Museum. We talked to Jenny Woodward. She's got some great stories. Jenny, we're sitting in uh, what's pretty much representative of a uh, uh, early 1900s home that's, here in Bonners Ferry. That's right. Most of this furniture and the furnishings belong to Eveline Ruberg, who was the longtime curator of the Boundary County Museum. And she would be considered a one of the pioneers uh, in this area. She came to Bonners Ferry by probably wagon train and when she was two years old, or two months old, and she just turned 90 last week. Oh, she's still living. Yes, yes. Edwin Bonner came in 1864 and started the ferry, and that was actually the beginning of the town. Mm -hmm. And then lumber became really big? Yes, in the early 1900s. Let's talk about some of the displays here at the museum. Give us some of the highlights. Um, our most recent addition is the Hawkins House bedroom furniture, and that was gifted to the museum um, a few years ago by the Hawkins family um, relatives. And Mary Hawkins was an early settler here. They, her family came in 1910 and built a log house up on the other side of town. And um, the furniture was actually purchased at the um, Philadelphia World's Fair in 1876. Now when we walked in, one of the first things we noticed was an unusual, is it, it's a white caribou? The white caribou has been an artifact in the museum since 1974, but it was actually um, killed by Indians up by Port Hill, and from there it went into Fred Fisher's saloon in Port Hill, and later on he moved it to his the white caribou saloon in Bonners Ferry. But when the saloon closed because of prohibition, the caribou went into storage, ultimately ended up in a museum in Newport, and then um, one of our local historians um, documented that it was indeed the white caribou from Bonners Ferry and begged it for it to come back to the museum here. You can tell there's a lot of history when you're walking around town. Uh, what is there to do in Bonners Ferry today? <laughs> well, you can walk up and down our streets and there's a lot of really interesting cute shops now that have replaced some of the older businesses. Most people in Bonners Ferry wear multiple hats. And one of those people is Jill. She's the president of our historical society, and she also has a wonderful little lunch shop downtown. Well, that's perfect, because right. I'm hungry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's good timing. I think we'll go grab a bite to eat. Thank you, Jenny. Up next on Explorer Television, we explore St. Mary's, Idaho. This portion of Explorer Television in Bonners Ferry is brought to you in part by Under the Sun, unique home and garden decor. Bonners Books, quality new and used books, fast and friendly special orders. Tightwire, if you want it well hung, you need Tightwire. Tucked away, candles, lotions, and linens. Bonners own bath and body shop. And by Pace Kirby, Boundary County's oldest real estate and insurance company. 
Wolf People offers a unique selection of clothing and other items bearing wolf and Native American themes. Explore us today and enjoy a close-up encounter with a timber, arctic, and tundra wolf. The staff at Wolf People are dedicated to educating the public about these beautiful animals, and we promise your visit to Wolf People will be a rewarding experience you'll always treasure. Explore Wolf People in the scenic Selkirk Mountains near Lake Kokolala off Highway 95 in northern Idaho and help preserve a piece of the wild. Hi, I'm Joe Ellithorpe, and I'd like to invite you to come and explore Northwest Pony Express. Here at Northwest Pony Express, we cater to the uh, shooting sports lifestyle. Antique and modern firearms, traditional archery. Come and explore us soon. Uh, you can find us located at the southwest corner of Highway 95 and Canfield Avenue directly west of the Silver Lake Mall. When staying in St. Mary's, enjoy the period style accommodations at Fort Hemingway Manor. Completed in 1913, each room is unique and exquisitely furnished. Fort Hemingway Manor can accommodate many different events such as reunions and parties. Also ask about our elopement package. Every morning, enjoy a gourmet breakfast in the beautiful dining room to get you ready for a day of exploring. Fort Hemingway Manor, a great place to stay when exploring St. Mary's, Idaho. This portion of Explorer Television is made possible by the St. Mary's Chamber of Commerce. Hi, and welcome to St. Mary's, Idaho. We're standing in front of the Loggers Memorial. It's a tribute to the 250 men who lost their lives to an industry that built this community and continues to be a big part of it. We sit on the confluence of the St. Joe and St. Mary's Rivers, a great waterway for moving the logs up and down the river to the two mills that still operate here. And at almost any time of the day, you can find logging trucks rumbling through the heart of downtown St. Mary's. But this is also one of the most beautiful places on earth. The outdoor setting offering a great backdrop for outdoor sports of all kinds hunting, fishing, snowmobiling. And while St. Mary's is primarily supported by the timber industry, there's a lot more to do than that. Within walking distance of downtown, you'll find a city park, tennis courts, picnic facilities, a swimming pool, the fairgrounds with well-groomed horse arena, an art gallery, RV hookups, a bowling alley, eight softball fields, and a riverfront park with beach picnic and docking facilities, not to mention the great restaurants and shopping. After a day of exploring St. Mary's, we're ready for a good night's sleep. We're staying at Fort Hemingway Manor, a bed and breakfast with a history and even a ghost story. In 1910, Fred Hemingway hired John Thompson, a master builder, to build this house after he and Ernest Clark were at the bar, and Ernest told Fred he would never amount to anything in this town. Now at that point he had a feed store, he had a mill and 1,800 acres out of town. He purchased this 40 acres and they broke ground in 1910 and it was finished in 1913. Everything on the first two floors is original to the house. We have chandeliers from England, the beams are from an old fort, the floor here is five different oaks, zebra, tiger, leopard, white and red, inlaid with black walnut. The windows are concave and convex, and you can see pr beautiful prisms when the sun is shining. It's so unusual to find all of that still intact in any home in the country. How did they preserve that? Was it just a, a couple of owners? And We are actually the sixth owner of the house. So I feel very fortunate. We, I talk with Fred all the time, had paint samples everywhere. People laughed at me, but we got it done. So you wanted to take it back to its original glory? I did, and I didn't want to make too many changes. I wanted the ceilings to have the cracks. I wanted the uh, stains on the floor to be here. I wanted, when someone walked in, I wanted you to think the same family had owned the house for 100 years. Tell me about some of the lore of the home. Well, we, Fred parades through periodically. He loves his room. Um, you'll smell cigar smoke. Uh, when I was stripping the floors, uh, it was almost like he was standing in the doorway watching me. Um, one evening I said, oh, I'd give anything for a beer. 
And when I walked into the kitchen, there was a beer on the counter. And no one else was here? No, just me and Fred. <laughs> That is so fascinating. I'd stay here just for that. <laughs> just, but I do have people that come just to see if he's going to come through and visit when they're here. Mm -hmm. What kind of a reaction do you get from guests, especially first time ones? I think when they get over the fact that they're not all going to have a bathroom in their room like you do at the hotel, they like having the, we have slippers and robes for our guests. We have high-speed wireless internet. You have access to the entire house. We have DVDs and VHF, and you can just come and go as you please. And it's a great house for reunions. We've done a number of reunions where people just take over the whole house. You can experience the beauty of St. Mary's